This is the Gerber Abacus, invented around the year 1000. It's a board divided into vertical columns together with a set of movable counters labeled 1 through 9. And that's it. You move them around, put some on, take some off, and you can add and multiply. This thing was invented by Gerbert of Aurillac. Aurillac is a small town in France. I had a hard time finding information about this guy online. You can type Gerbert d'Aurillac into Wikipedia, you just get bumped to this page about some pope. And if you just search for Gerbert, you get this guy. It's Gerbert. Hi, I'm Gerbert. Hey, welcome to the Gerbert Video Curriculum Series. After a bit of digging, here's what I learned. Gerbert of Aurillac was born in obscurity in France in the year 946. He became a monk at a young age. He eventually became a well-known scholar, and you know how these things go. In April of the year 999, at age 53, he became the Pope. So that Pope, that really was Gerbert of Aurillac. Pope Sylvester II. <laughs> I like that. So Gerbert was the Pope for just over four years, which isn't very long. He certainly wasn't the shortest, though. One guy only lasted 13 days. Come on, Urban the Seventh. The columns on Gerbert's abacus are like the bars on a traditional abacus. This one represents the ones digit. This is the tens. These letters up here are the Roman numerals that tell you the place values. Gerbert's abacus is a variation on one of the oldest computing instruments ever, the counting board. A counting board was just a flat space with marked regions or grooves, and you could move counters around to represent different amounts. Here, the colors don't mean anything, it's just where you put them. So maybe I'd represent 362 like this. Three counters in the hundreds area, six in the tens area, and two in the ones. Then if I want to add another number, say 429, I just put those ones on there too, and then jam them all together. You gotta do some regrouping. I got 10 counters over here, so that translates to one counter in the next area. And there's your answer. During his career as a mathematician, Gerber knew one thing that almost nobody else in Europe knew. The Hindu-Arabic number system. Let's just try to imagine life without the Arabic number system. How about you try to add these same numbers that I just did using Roman numerals? 362 plus 429. So how are you gonna do that? You want to write them like this? It doesn't help. Those Roman numerals don't line up in any sensible way that lets you add them. So you're stuck. Now, some people might have been able to add numbers like this in their head, but even to a well-educated European in the Middle Ages, a calculation like this one, where let's try and multiply them instead. This would have been regarded as simply impossible to do without some kind of physical calculator like an abacus or a counting board. But the Hindu-Arabic number system, this is what makes us able to do this kind of thing without a calculator. Those idiots back then would have thought it's impossible, but you and I can do it pretty easily. It's not because we're smarter, it's just because we write our numbers down in a better way. The Hindu-Arabic number system as we know it today was basically settled into its current form around the 800s in the work of Al-Khwarizmi. This guy Al-Khwarizmi, he's without a doubt one of the all-time greats, but I never heard of him growing up because I was taught by the whites. Gerbert knew and appreciated the Arabic numerals, and so for his abacus, he wanted to create a device which combines the power of the Arabic numbers with the physicality of a traditional counting board. The only difference, really, is in the counters that he used. Gerbert used counters with Arabic digits written on them. So that same computation I did before with the counters, using Gerbert's system, it looks like this. I lay down my two numbers, 362 and 429. Then I just add the digits in each column. The 3 and the 4 add up to 7. The 6 and the 2 give me 8. The 2 and the 9 give me 11, which is a 1 here and a 1 here. And then this 8 and the 1 add up to a 9. And there you go, that's the answer. Of course, you could add up these counters in whatever order you want. You just keep going until you have only one counter in each column. Gerber apparently used small cone-shaped markers, which I bet would have been very satisfying to pick up and move around. Sounds like a great design, but I had a hard time buying cheap little cones online. I found some that would have been too small, some would have been too big. 
You can get little cone-shaped makeup sponges, but those wouldn't be very easy to slide around. I'm telling you, somebody could make a lot of money selling small wooden cones to the Gerber enthusiast market. It's not too hard to find small wooden discs, but I decided to pay twice as much and go for hexagons just because they looked cute. I found some hexagons on eBay from China, laid down my $3.27, and a week or so later I got a bag of hexagons. Shipped all the way from Shenzhen, Shiguang, Mingxin, Kugong, Mingji, Daoyu, Kundi, Lugong, Yeku, Hanhai, Dake, Jichuang, Xinwan, Shenzhen, Guangdong, China. Gerber's original abacus doesn't exist anymore, but there are several descriptions and drawings of it by other people from around the year 1000. Apparently Gerber had his own abacus made on a large parchment or animal skin with 27 columns. That would let Gerber's board handle any values up to this ridiculous number. Take that, Shenzhen, Shiguang, Mingxin, Kugong, Mingji, Dao. Gerber's abacus is basically just a counting board, but is it any better? Well, Gerber apparently worked pretty hard to teach people how to multiply with this thing. Multiplying on a counting board isn't too easy since you end up with a lot of counters really fast, but this thing can handle it pretty well. Let's try 362 times 429. Now, when you do this, you need to keep track of which numbers are multiplying and which are adding. So I'm going to put a little divider here. I'll put the numbers to multiply at the top, and the answer is going to appear at the bottom where everything's going to be added. Now I'm going to multiply digit by digit in my head. This is easy for me because I'm already an expert with the Arabic numbers, but in Gerber's time this would have required some serious training. So first I do 9 times 2 is 18. I put that down there. Then 9 times 6 is 54. I put those down there, offset in the correct position. And then 9 times 3 is 27, put those down there. Now I did all the multiplications by 9, so I can get rid of that one. Now I'm just going to do the same thing for all the other digits. Okay, now I'm all done multiplying. Now all of this stuff down here needs to get added together. And there you go. This thing's pretty cute. I like the fact that I'm doing something with my hands, but it's still pretty easy to see what's going on at any given step. To me, it's much easier than a traditional abacus. On abacus, you just have one rack to work with, and there's nowhere to store the intermediate steps, so you have to do all the multiplications in your head while also doing the adding and carrying at the same time. On Gerber's board, you just let those counters sit there at the bottom until you're ready to add them up at the end. So I really like Gerber's abacus, but in the history books it'll always be remembered as a bit of an awkward transitional technology. Within a few centuries, the general population was learning to read and write, and everyone could learn to use the Arabic numbers by hand just like we do today. And once you get to know that, there's not much use for the physicality of Gerber's abacus. I mean, writing down the numbers is actually faster and probably easier. This is always the story with these old computing devices. Eventually, each one gets superseded by superior technology. Sometimes it takes a while, sometimes it happens right away, but there's always going to be a better calculator that makes the old ones worthless. It's a story we see over and over again. The stupid old thing gets beat out by a shiny new thing. But this time, what shiny new thing beat out Gerber's abacus? Well, it wasn't really a thing at all. It was this. It wasn't an innovation of engineering. Just a new way of speaking and writing and thinking about numbers. This new technology wasn't something you hold in your hand, but you hold it in your mind. People like Al-Khwarizmi hadn't just invented a new tool, they had elevated the human mind to make it stronger than it was. And this is the pure essence of mathematics, expressed not in objects of wood or metal or silicon, but in the transformation of the mind, of the soul.